Magic of the Moonlight is the latest feature film by Woody Allen. It is a romantic comedy set in the 1920s south of France. The film stars Colin Firth as Stanley, a magician who tries to demask a spiritual psychic played by Emma Stone. Here is the trailer for the film. <laughs> Stanley, you are still the best in the world. I need your help. The plot thickens. The Catledge family are socialized in the south of France. There's a woman who has them believing she's a spirit medium. You are the greatest debunker of fake spiritualism. She won't fool me. Sophie looked into my eyes and told me things about me she could never have known. I'm told she's very pleasant to look at. She's a visionary and a vision. I'm getting a mental impression. Are you from the Orient? The Far East? Considering you are Wailing Sue, that's pretty damn impressive. <laughs> you are a very clever little humbug. I think you'll trick me into showing you how I deceive people. Stanley doesn't believe in spiritualists. He thinks you're all scoundrels. She's quite likable, even if she is a fraud. My mental impressions are cloudy. Are they cumulus clouds or cirrus? You're making fun of me. Mr. Tavern is rather obnoxious, but it's not entirely unappealing. I understand you're holding a seance tonight. The planets are in alignment. Now, I will summon the unseen world. Give us a sign. The more I watch her, the more I'm stumped. Could she be real? I'm beginning to question my own common sense. You've always been so certain about the world, and I've always tried to teach you that we don't know. Tell me something about my Aunt Vanessa's colorful past. I see a member of Parliament. Go on. A love affair. You cannot possibly know this. I'm overwhelmed, Sophie. I never dreamed you could look this beautiful. I believe that the dull reality of life is all there is, but you are proof that there's more. More mystery, more magic. You're gonna die! Run! My aunt used to bring me here as a boy. The roof opens up and see the universe. It's menacing. You find that menacing? I'd say it was pretty romantic. Joining now the film's two star actors, Colin Firth and Emma Stone. I'm pleased to have them at this table. Welcome. Good to be here. Let me just start where I am compelled to start because of the conversation we had before. What is it about Woody Allen and a Woody Allen film uh, that you're drawn to and that you have some trepidation about? Um, it's a bit of a high wire act in a way because he. He shoots, he, there's this very substantial material, you know, it's text-based, it's dialogue-based. Dialogue You're going to be up against very, very good people. And he knows how to make performances flourish out of relationships. So that's the bait, you know, you've got all that to play for. And then this body of work where, you know, yeah. years and years and years, yeah. you can <laughs> pick a decade and it's one of your favorite movies. That... And, and he can do many things. I mean, he, he can, can write, he can play music, he can... Yeah. direct so the challenge is massive and you don't want to be the first bad performance ever in a Woody Allen movie you also said he doesn't rehearse much no at all no. at all, Not at all. <laughs> so Not you at have all, all these soliloquies in this film well yes and, the, the, the and, rehearsal and no rehearsal of these films. none and in other words the first shoot is a rehearsal that's right I mean, we were, we, we were given the script. You, you were, were you given it a month in advance or something as well? A month, yeah. Yeah. So you, and hearing all sorts of things uh, about his approach to work, some of which turned out to be true, others which were absolutely not. One was that he doesn't direct either. Mm -hmm. He certainly does. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but I think you came and said he had notes. Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That's I, directing, isn't it? I, f I, oh, yeah, I, I find him to be a very involved director. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people will tell you that he kind of sits on the sidelines and doesn't say much. And... They're, they feel like they yeah. don't know if they're doing it right or not, and I didn't have that experience at all. The and opposite you, was true. Yeah. yeah. But he has fun on the set, or not? In, in I think, I, I think. think. He's funny on the set? If he's, he's having a lot of fun, set? he hides it well a lot of the time. <laughs> um, I'm sure he's having fun on the inside. <laughs> you know, we but, had fun yeah. on the outside. But so he's focused. Time. Yeah. Yeah. Focus is yeah. No, you don't get a lot of chit-chat in between. Yeah. And, really? um, you know, the trouble is that I'm, you know, if you get a, a, a reclusive New York intellectual and a very repressed Englishman, that doesn't make a party, really, when you put them together. You'd be the but repressed if you Englishman. But throw in a Southwestern girl. <laughs> yeah, she livens and, things up. And so. I loved yeah. it. Yeah. But this was a dream for you. This is, oh, an absolute dream, yeah. yeah. Absol well, as I, I think it is for most people, or for many, many actors. I think many actors, you know. How did it come about? For me, I got a phone call um, in April of last year, and 
they said that he would like to meet me, and I went to his office, and I had one of those, you know, three and a half minute meetings that you've probably heard about, where I walked in and I was standing for about a minute of it, and then we sat down on a couch, and he said, "Okay, thank you," and I left, and it was three and a half minutes. That was it. Yeah. It was like a question. It was like. Where do you live? Oh, it's just that kind of stuff. Yeah. What, where, what's that coat? Is yeah, it hot? Take yeah, it off. You, you can go. You know, yeah. <laughs> I didn't even get where you lived. Yeah, I, mean, yeah. I, I, I didn't he get that you. He already probably was, was you, sold on you yeah. early on. Yeah, I didn't get yeah. the meeting. So. Yeah. So was it? I mean, he already knew about you too. I mean, that meeting simply was to sort of say, "We're going to do this. Thank you very much." I, well, he is a pretty wonderful casting director, um, yeah. and I don't think that. I mean, to this day, he, he he's told me that he saw, you know, thirty minutes of one of the movies I was in on the treadmill once when he was walking on the treadmill as he does every morning. Yeah. Um, I don't know that he's really seen me in, in, in any anything. Films. I mean, possibly. But I'll bet you they put something together. I mean, I, I don't know. I, see, I've got to believe that because of the, his interests are so Catholic that, that he's, he knows about all the movies that are made and, you know, he knows about all the, what, everything that's happening in the NBA. Mm -hmm. He knows everything's happening in New York. He knows everything is happening in, in the world of music and, and, and restaurants. He's a frequenter of all the best restaurants in New York. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, he seems to me to be a person that's really plugged into the world rather than... Yeah, I think that's probably true. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so the movie. Uh, you're a guy, uh, you, you are um, a person who, as a sideline, sort of debunks mm -hmm. people who are out there. Uh, and yeah. she's one that you think is doing that. And so... Tell me about the relationship and what you discover uh, in the character she plays that makes it an interesting relationship. Uh, there are parallels to Pygmalion here. Oh. Um, I think that, you know, as in the words of Oscar Wilde, you know, the great artist steals. He's, yes, I, he's basically, I, I, you know, in some ways I think this, yeah. this has a, a, a correspondence. What's the beginning of that quote? I mean, the last part the bad of Bad artist plagiarizes. Yeah, that's right. And the good like artist. <laughs> But he, he um, he's, he's not doing that. He's, he, he's clearly, I would say, influenced by the structure of that, by the bare bones of it. And it's fleshed out with something which is entirely his own, yeah. to the point where I don't think you'd even spot the, 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 um, the equivalent. But um, what you have is a supercilious, self-assured man who is... Supercilious and self-assured. You call him supercilious, judgmental, cynical, and arrogant. <laughs> and has a very high opinion of his superior intellect. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Which comes into question, whether that intellect is superior, you know, yeah. and, 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 and then he meets her. the girl, yes, yeah. of a young girl. And, and his first impression of her is that she's... He, that she's adjectives, I don't know, gutter snipe, uh, <laughs> uneducated, I can't remember them now, but they were, none of them were edifying. Uh, and to the, to the extent when I first saw it, I thought, are we sure we really, really need to hear any more of this unsympathetic, you know, yeah. diminishing of this person? But actually, it's all to set him up for a fall. And um, we create this sense of... Yeah, because it's, I think that one of the themes about it is... Is, uh, is calling certainty into question. I think that the, you, you are setting yourself up um, as foolhardy. And, and, and so how does this character see him, this young Sophie? Well, that's complicated, I oh, think. Oh, try. Well, uh, you know, Sophie has, there's m more to the story than what we see of her in the, in the first, I would say, half or, or three quarters of the movie. And so I think... What you see of Sophie is a is a real draw to this kind of lifestyle and this kind of sophistication and mind that she has not had the privilege of of being exposed to before. She grew up on the street and had this gift, and her mother was a a very uh, mm -hmm. hard driving woman who decided mm -hmm. to make money off of her daughter, and so she's been she spent the majority of her life trying to trying to make enough money to survive and so obviously a man like Stanley is not someone that she comes up you know that comes along very often and takes an interest in her yeah and, and, and she's determined to um, try to make him believe that she's not like everybody else very determined yeah and, yeah and, and does, does a pretty good job at it. well yeah I mean I think that it's all it's dealing with the whole business of having faith in things that can't be verified, you know, yeah. whether that's 
um, for theatrical purposes on stage. This is not math. No, exactly. And then, and, and Stanley provides himself. I mean, he's a paradox in a way because he, he doesn't mind um, fooling people as stagecraft. You know, it's, he makes an art form of, of suspending disbelief in an audience, but then he's prepared to come clean and say it's a trick. He just doesn't like it getting appropriated as, yeah. as a sort of a, some sort of spiritually authentic yeah. thing. But um, there are other unseen factors that come into play. It's not just about whether there's a god or an afterlife or, or whether magic is real. It actually is feelings for other people which don't fit into logic come in as well, which is, I think, the, the twist that we start to see in the, in the third act. Mm. So that it's, it's not just about whether she's a fake or whether she's real. It's this other thing that he can't make sense of. That there are feelings what is kicking. That? Just the, the well, it's love, really, yeah. if you want to call it that. Uh, but but this encounter with with a humbling experience, I you think. You like to pull somebody's a fake and you fall in love with her. Yeah, and I, and I, you, I, there are other <laughs> factors exactly. here because it's to do with his friendship with his best friend, yeah. and you know. Yeah. So you're getting things coming at you, which you know weren't to plan. And uh, it, take a look at this. this: is a clip in which Stanley is mocking Sophie. Good evening. I understand you're holding a seance tonight. She's been waiting for the right moment, and now she says the planets are in alignment. And what do they have to be in alignment with? Your, your vertebrae? Can you do the seance if someone in the room is a non-believer? And, and when, when you contact the spirits, will we be able to see the souls? And how are they different from ghosts? Or are they ghosts? I should think souls are quite different. Have you ever heard of ectoplasm? Ectoplasm. Now, isn't that a milky substance rather like yogurt? Oh, you are a joker, aren't you? So you're saying it might look like yogurt, but it will be Mrs. Catledge's former husband. You're very big, and I'm, this is not about method acting, but, but you're very big on the idea that if you're going to make a movie, you really do inhabit the, uh, the, the character and his time. You live inside the character and his time. I think I just do it for fun. I mean, I, I, I research a lot, but yeah. I don't know if anything I've ever done as research has helped what I've done on screen. I think it's, it's, it's to, uh, you know, I didn't go to university and I, it, this is, I, I spend my life doing this instead. I just enjoy it. It diverts me into some area of life or history or something. That... And you? Did I go to school? No, I, no you left school when you left. after doing a my PowerPoint presentation <laughs> to your parents right. as to why you should go to L.A. You really know what you're talking about, don't you? I don't know yes. about this. Um, yeah. We don't need to talk about it now. I'll tell you later. Uh, He's a mere 14. And, exactly. And, I'm stuck. And convinces her parents, by the way, really? that she should get on the next bus and go to L.A. We Can we pursue this? Bus, yeah, no, I know. Not a bus. I just thought I'd love it. Was it, it, it was we a car. We drove ourselves. <laughs> At 14? <laughs> I was 14 when I made the made presentation. You're right. Yeah. Wow. You still have <laughs> you got it down to the deck. Uh -huh. All right, here's another clip. This is you leading a seance. Here it is. Give us a sign. Harry. Is that you, Harry? Spirit, signal us once for you. Twice for no. Harry, are you okay? Are you happy? Ah, oh, spirit. If you can hear me, give me a sign. It's amazing. Um, we were just talking about the, the, the technique to, of looking at things, and you never know what scene's going to be cut out mm -hmm. and all of that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, but he works fast. 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 So Cut this fast. movie in nine days. Well, yeah. I mean, this movie that he's doing now, I believe, unless my math is off, is his 50th, the yes. movie that we're shooting right now. Right. And oh, the so one you're shooting with, been with Joaquin. The one, yes. Right. And uh, the I... I mean, his process is so, I think, he, he's really, it's ritualistic. It's very, um, yeah, he's quick. He moves it's quickly. probably a pattern there now. Maybe a I mean, you, and also, post-production, I mean, he, he's he's astounded me. He's never dubbed a line of his, any of his films. I mean, yeah. it's standard procedure that you do Everybody ADRs. does. You have to do he, something. You, yeah. For sound reasons, for whatever, you're always going to do a little bit of voice work afterwards. He's, he yeah. said he'd never done it in any movie. 
know. he wasn't even familiar with it. He said he hoped never to have to do it. I mean, yeah. I presume he's not familiar with it. I mean, if he walked in after <laughs> 40, 50 yes. films and never having done it, no, it'd be like he'd, yeah. having, he wouldn't even know the technology. Yeah. Uh, I bet you if you had dinner with him, he's one of the funniest people you could possibly have dinner with and the most interesting. I haven't had the pleasure. <laughs> I had lunch with him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he, and he was. He was. We had a snack. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, pretty, he, he was funny, though. I mean, pretty... even when he was directing, I mean, it was often at my expense. Um, but, yeah. uh, <laughs> you know, I, I, he's the only director ever to refer to my performance as somnambulistic. Um, oh, they put you to sleep? Yeah. Well, <laughs> sleepwalking. Sleepwalking. So I'm sure yeah. people have felt that way about my performances, yeah. but the yeah. actual word was so little used that I had to. I hoped for a it's moment like it was a compliment. Maybe he meant ease of performance. He didn't. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't at all. Did and that's he? a common note. He, he, he did, wants he to make sure the that. audience is asleep. If he meant that, he would have said that, wouldn't oh, he? Yeah. He has enough command of language to say what he means. No, usually if he was happy with the scene, you knew because you could hear the crew packing up to go shoot something else. <laughs> you know, that, that was, yeah. that was These movies don't cost a lot to make, do they? No idea what the budget is, but no. We certainly didn't. It mm. certainly doesn't end up in our pockets. Yeah. No, I mean, it's, there are a lot of um, very yeah. compelling well, I mean, reasons was, to do Woody Allen. Yeah, film, I, well, actually, well, there was a thing in which, you know, we made Rome in Paris, that, and I think somehow these cities were, were making possible the production of the film, yeah. in part, because that's one of the reasons he moved to Europe and started making films in mm -hmm. Europe. Well, yeah. Hence this film. I don't yeah. know when he's going to make another. Is new film in Rhode Island? In Rhode Island, yeah, Rhode Island. So we're, we're stateside. We're stateside, yeah. But did you make a multi-thing deal when you went to when you went in for that three minutes? Oh my God! I honestly, I honestly showed up certain of my being fired. I, I showed up and I said. I'm going to get fired off this sure movie. It's going deal. to be. Yeah. I didn't no, even think I was making it to the next week. Yeah. But then mean, as time went you on. Mean when you like, showed up, you thought when you When I showed up in before France. Before you had said a word. Before I had said a word. Been in a scene. I was absolutely, and I mean this, convinced I was going to be fired. Convinced. <laughs> I've never been so convinced. And then a And weekend, then after you did it, the first scene, did you feel more first, comfortable? No. Thinking? Not after oh, our no. first scene. No. We had, we had a scene. The first scene was that we reshot and, and did not didn't do anything to reassure movie. us at all. No, day one no. was hard. Day was. one was incredibly. So what was scary. wrong with the scene? We just I, I don't I think we couldn't get the the tone exactly oh, right yeah. without you know without the rehearsal and without a table right. read. So, you I mean, kind of the, are, are finding so your sea legs and he's finding thing, his yeah. and and yeah. so we're, we're all sort of yeah. you know he, and he often reshoots his first day because it's a rehearsal. He did in our case too, and and the scenes haven't made it the final cut. Yeah. So the, the first day scenes that you reshot didn't make it to the final cut. Mm -mm. No. No. Are you, when you see a film, often disappointed because what you thought was maybe your best moments or didn't make it to the final cut, or do you care? If I've ever had a good moment, it's it, they, 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 they need whatever they can get. <laughs> no, I I, you think I you buy this kind of sort of. No, like, this is not this some sort of a sort of, shtick. Yeah, I promise you. Know, sort of uh, yeah. false no, English no, false I modesty thing. Good moment. Yeah. If I have a good moment, no. I hope it. No, makes it's like you're going fishing when you're good. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I told you I had a bad feeling about that. <laughs> This is a, makes my case. Does the word Academy Award Oscar mean anything to you? They don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> listen, <That's true. laughs> they don't. They, 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 listen, they get it they, wrong they a lot of the mistake. time. They, they might they have. You just got lucky because you know, Harvey promoted the hell out of that. Otherwise, <laughs> you otherwise, right. you'd listen, be just I've done another... underappreciated fine work elsewhere. I'll take it and know of that. <laughs> You were the king of underappreciated fine right, work. Yeah. They're, they're lounding the, the wrong and, thing. You know, the two things we know, expect the worst uh, and underappreciated. Oh, uh, yes, exactly. Yeah, right. exactly. Well, no, appreciated for other things. Okay. I, you know, it's uh, non-meretriciously appreciated. Yeah, right. exactly. Meretriciously? Is that a word? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it is. I am uh, so impressed with you using it. This is why it. I had a bad feeling. I should have put that in my PowerPoint. We're going to take right angles all the way through this conversation. <laughs> yes, indeed. It, yeah. um, so what did you learn from Woody Allen? Um, honestly, and this is, uh, you know, nothing. the way I approach life, literally nothing. Um, <laughs> I think the way I, I have tended to approach life and work, maybe to, to my uh, detriment at times, is to not take things too seriously. And I, I don't think that he is... Um, taking his, I think he takes his work very seriously yes, and he, he cares does. very much, but yes, I, I think he uh, has, a, has a bit of perspective on life and maybe yeah. it's because we're all careening into a, a hole of nothingness. Yes. 
but I, I found him to be. Uh, you bought that theory, have you? Lighthearted. Careening into it. Yeah, we're, all we're, of nothingness. We're careening into. <laughs> we two have really gotten along. I, we did. <laughs> you wouldn't think it from this. But <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. I'm two seconds away from fleeing spitballs. Yeah. <laughs> so, so let's just talk about this. How did you prepare for this? I mean, how do you get up for this character of Sophie? Um, I. Honestly, you take I take that seriously. I, well, I I take that slightly seriously. Yeah. Uh, I I read a little bit about Houdini, who was oh, yeah. actually calling out many of these right, mystics right. in the that 20s the because is... there was a psychic that had, had falsely uh, spoken for his mother, and he was incredibly angry. Yeah. It was his mother. Am I correct? I don't know about that. Part. Okay. <laughs> you don't prepare. Um, <laughs> you don't. You, you don't prepare. Um, but I I read a little bit about that, and then I honestly I just watched a lot of uh, Clara Bow. Really? And uh, her physicality oh, and all her, really all her all her stuff. Because I figured that Sophie probably would have seen Clara Bow, and Sophie's an actress, and yeah. you know she's she's a very vaudevillian mystic. Yeah. And I had this whole idea that it would be underplayed, but Woody wanted the hands in the air and you know oh. fingers to the temples and this kind of. It's like overplaying, isn't it? Yeah, but I mean th those were what they were like. These psychics, they yeah. were you know. Oh yes, yes, yes. Seeing the future. Because they were on stage and, was, and right. you know. It, the right. theatrics added to the disbelief or exactly, the belief. Exactly, exactly. So it's yeah. just a little bit of Clara Bow. Well, I don't think I did her justice, and she's probably mad at me, you know, somewhere <laughs> in the nothingness. Clara Bow, wherever she but is. Wherever the, she in is the, in the yeah, void. Not twice on the table. <laughs> <laughs> this is a great table for a seance. You, oh, yes. She's it's just a great the room. Let's, can, Let's just see if we can like, conjure anything up. A little Lost Clara Bow. Did they dim the lights, or am I just... Is there something among us? So did so? Are you a mystic at all? Is anything mystical about you? Oh my God! Oh. I'm entirely mystic. Oh, Colin, am I not a mystic? She, I don't buy it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it's, all it's, of it. I love all of it so much. She, I wouldn't say I am a mystic, but no, I'm very. No, no, no. I'm very way. interested yeah. in it. Yeah. Very interested. Really? What do you mm -hmm. mean? Like you read books or what? I read books. I, yeah. I've seen you've been psychics. To a seance? I've seen tarot other than card preparation readers. for this role. I've have you ever seance. been to a Absolutely. seance? Absolutely. You you have to know that when I first when I met Woody, it was a dream come true. And then when he offered me the role and I went to read the part and it yeah. was to play a psychic, yeah. I cried because oh, I was so, so overjoyed to play a psychic because it's, I've loved it my whole life. And, but Magic, do you believe in psychic. spiritualism and all that stuff? Yes. <laughs> 100%. What are you, crazy? What do you think, we're going into a void? No, she doesn't. No, I, I don't either. Do you? No. And no, of course not. No, it's just... Uh, You're uh, right. It's all meaningless. Ugh. But you like this acting thing, don't you? I do. You should. I do. Well, depending on the day. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, this is a good day. Okay, the movie's Magic in the Moonlight. It's out in select theaters. They have to go over to see Mr. Letterman, so I'm going to let them go. Uh, select theaters on July 25th. Um, what can you say to remarkable and fantastic people who are just fun to be around? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining us. See you next time.